you're really not someone who knows that they want to go into the medical field 100 percent yeah and someone where it's actually possible for you because you have to look and think that of the i don't know maybe a million applicants a yeah. year or so of course not all of the million are going to be able and and, and good applicants Yo, what up everybody? It's your boy, Chris, and I'm in the studio with my guy, Andrew. Yeah, and we're here, we're just chilling in the lab, cooking, fried rice and stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, so today we're just gonna interview Andrew. He's a, a potential medical school student. And as you know, like the application process is somewhat super ridiculous. Tedious tedious ridiculous like all those adjectives so we're just gonna dive deep into it and try to figure out like why this is like he's gonna give us some insight about the process and what can we do to get through this process I don't know man okay so Andrew first question why medicine so there's a few reasons um, of course growing up my mother being Chinese she uh, wanted me to become a doctor do something prestigious so she kind of implanted it in my head at yeah. a young age um, but since then, uh, thinking about the field, it's something where I can do something different every day. I can really specialize in something that I'm passionate about uh, just because it's such a vast field. Yeah. And there's so much continual learning in the field that I don't think I'll ever get bored doing it. So yeah. I think it's something that fits me well and something that I can uh, progress at. Yeah. Too long. Sure. I mean, so being a doctor is great and all, but like in order to get there, it's kind of difficult. So can you tell us a little bit about like the process? Yeah, absolutely. So. So after high school, um, you're gonna go and get your bachelor's degree. It's usually a four-year process. Yeah. Um, after that, you will, if you're lucky, go straight into medical school, if you're lucky. which is another four-year process in medical school. Yeah. Um, after that, uh, so medical education is very broad. You pretty much just learn about everything in medicine. While you're in medical school, you'll decide what you want to specialize in. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on what you specialize in, you'll do a specific residency which can be anywhere between three and six years, depending on the specialization. You'll have a shorter thing, three years for say internal medicine, right. um, versus a longer residency, six years might be uh, neurosurgery or something like that. Nice. Um, and then after that, you can choose to do a fellowship, which is an extra uh, one year, mm -hmm. just to do an even further specialization, but the fellowship really isn't necessary. The only necessary parts are your bachelor's, your medical school, and your residency. And all of that will total you just over between, well, 10 to 13 years, pretty much. So, like, what age would you be looking at when you're out of there? Uh, shoot. Like, we can probably do the math, but, like, I just want to hear probably the number. Early 30s. Oh, my God. Yeah. Man. That's so ridiculous. Yeah. Um, okay, so where are you in this process right now? So, I just finished my bachelor's. Congrats. I'm, uh, Congrats. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks. Um, I'm definitely very early in this process. Yeah. So I, I'm currently applying um, to medical schools uh -huh. and I just submitted my secondary applications. Okay. Um, and what, what are like secondaries and primaries? For yeah, so know? so for medical school, you to, to apply, there's, there's about three steps. First uh -huh. is your primary application. It's uh, just a general application, has your GPA, one essay about why you want to go to medical school. Mm -hmm. That's something that you submit to all medical schools. If those medical schools like you well enough, um, they'll send you a secondary application, which costs you about $100. Yeah, and, and the primaries are The primaries are about 160 flat for, and then 40 for each oh. school. So depending on how many schools, it can cost a lot. Yeah. And then your secondary, um, if they like you well enough, they'll send you a secondary. What's really happened recently is every school will send you a secondary. That's what Because medical schools yeah. have found out, well, if I have 10,000 applicants, why am I sending 1,000 secondaries? when I can make 900,000 more dollars sending yeah. 9,000 more. To everybody. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so everyone's getting a secondary. Um, and then after your secondary, if they, if they really like you, they'll give you an interview. And interviews are the thing where you cross your fingers and you hope you get it. Because yeah. once you get an interview, it's typically about a 10% chance that you might get in, depending on the school. So if it's a 10% chance for the interview, and that's if you've gone through the primary and secondary, like what's the chance that you'll get in like sending a primary? I guess. So it really depends. If you're looking at your in-state school, um, a lot of schools will prioritize in-state applicants because uh -huh. schools get a tax break or some government help if they have if they're uh, educating X amount of state students. Uh -huh. um, at an in-state school, you might have somewhere between an eight and maybe twelve percent chance of acceptance. 
if you're looking at an out-of-state school, um, a school that's really not favoring you for coming from them, yeah. um, you might have between a 0.5 and 1.5% and chance. Dude. <laughs> it's pretty low, and, and it's definitely due to a lot of oversaturation yeah. in, in pre-med students right now. Yeah. So can we just get your perspective about like this, you mentioned oversaturation, mm -hmm. like, why do you feel like this is oversaturated and what can we do about it? Well, I think it's so oversaturated because everyone is being told from a young age, just like my mom, that I should be a doctor. Yeah. Um, and, and it's something that's prestigious enough that yeah. so many people want to go ahead and do it. Um, but what's happening in the medical field is medical schools can only expand at a certain rate. Mm -hmm. um, but what's really inflexible is your residency placings because those are highly regulated and so although a medical school might be able to hold an extra 100 students, um, your residency might only be able to hold an extra five. And so that's really the, the choke point here. Why is, why is it so tightly regulated? For um, well, it's, it's, it's a big investment for a hospital to take on residents. It's, it's a lot of work for them. Um, not just the residents, but for the hospital. So yeah. it's it's difficult to set up that program. So let's go back to like sending primaries and secondaries and stuff. How many applications did you send out? So this cycle, <laughs> I applied very broadly. Um, I sent out about 30 applications. 30? 30. 30. Is so, that typical? So typically your average student your average applicant is going to send out about 14 okay. applications. Yeah. And so just from primaries, based off the, the pricing I gave out before, yeah. that's about 700 bucks. Uh -huh. And for your secondaries, assuming the medical schools all give you a secondary, yeah. because they pretty much do, that's about 1300 bucks. Yep. So in total, that's about $2,000 um, for your average applicant. For me, those totals ended up being about $4,000. And of course, you're not even factoring the time it takes to write the I'm essays. I'm not factoring in the time to write the essays. Um, or the time and the money for the interviews. Because right. if you get an interview, they're you're not gonna flying have, you're you You're going to have to fly out yourself. You're flying you out, exactly. And you have to get lodging, uh, yeah. everything. Like Airbnb, probably. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's oh. cheap as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, like, hotels aren't even a thing mm -hmm. anymore nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, so if let's, do you have any, like, an estimate of how much you're going to spend on this, this cycle alone? Uh, so we're about four grand with just the applications, yeah. um, the interviews. We'll see how many I get. Yeah. I'm just trying to save up money right now, right. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Like I don't want to spend that much, but hopefully, I get the chance that I can spend money on an yes. interview. Yes. Right? Um, so not only is it time-consuming to like apply, and mm -hmm. it's not only time-consuming to, you know, go through like the 13 years of medical right. school, it's also just super expensive to, to apply, it not is. even factoring the medical school tuition. Right, and yeah, exactly. It's, it's very expensive to apply. Yeah. Um, it's difficult to take loans out for that because it's not um, an official schooling, of course, you're, mm -hmm. you're not doing that through the school. And, and like you said, that's not factoring in medical school itself, yeah. where most students are graduating hundreds of thousand dollars yeah. in debt. Yeah, because like it was the average like yearly annual tuition is fifty thousand ish, roughly. That's pretty cheap for an out of state. That's pretty cheap for an out of state. Probably between like sixty and sixty five. For an in state, between like thirty, probably about thirty five per year. And you think about all the years you're going to be in school like that yeah. adds up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Where do they think like students are going to get this money? Loans. Lots of mm. loans. Um, fortunately, most medical professions pay very well if uh -huh. you can finish the schooling. Um, so if you set up a, a payment plan and you're, you're good with your money, then you should be able to pay it off uh, without too much difficulty. Okay. Um, okay, so let's like pivot and talk about um, your bachelor's. So you mentioned that you need a bachelor's in order to apply to medical school, right. but like, does that bachelor's have to be anything specific? And like, what did you get your bachelor's in? Do you think it helped you into applying? Yeah, so I did my bachelor's in chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, for medical school, you definitely don't need to be specific. A lot of people will study humanities. A lot of people might study engineering. The most common, about 55% of applicants study biology. Um, so, you can really study anything you want and then go into medical school. Mm -hmm. There is some statistics behind showing your MCAT score, uh, the examination before medical school, 
and its relevance to your undergraduate GPA. It's shown that physical sciences and engineering majors tend to test pretty well. Yeah. Um, so perhaps it might give you a benefit on the MCAT, but overall it, your bachelor's is not very important. Yeah. So do you feel like chemistry prepared you for medical school? Um, I would say it prepared me okay. I think biology might have prepared me better because I would have taken courses like anatomy and physiology yeah. or other things that can help me once I'm in medical school rather than physical chemistry. Yeah. Who cares about physical chemistry? I don't care about Dude, physical chemistry. Who cares chemistry. about a lot of things we learn in yeah. school, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. Because, but, but at the end of the day, I think that, that that's a topic that I can learn pretty easily once I'm in medical school anyway. So yeah. in the end, it doesn't matter too much. Okay. Cool. So. Um, so you mentioned like you're in the process of applying, mm -hmm. you're in your secondaries, like what have you done specifically to boost your application and elevate yourself above like all the other applicants? Yeah, so um, I've done a lot of community outreach um, through volunteering. I've volunteered at a free clinic with medically underserved patients. That's mm -hmm. a huge patient demographic um, that a lot of medical schools are looking for students to work with. Um, I've, I've done volunteering with uh, developmentally disabled adults and then some work on campus tutoring yeah. um, organic chemistry to students. I've done some research. I published a paper in biochemistry. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Check Dr. It out. Collins. Yeah, maybe it'll be in the <laughs> link in the bio. Um, um, done some clinical research with Virginia Mason. Yeah. Um, got decent grades. I didn't realize I wanted to follow the medical path until I was in my, about halfway through my sophomore year yeah. of college. So since then I've had great grades. Before that, not so much. So my cumulative is okay. Okay. Um, I'm sure you make up for it from other things, like, as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. And I've done a lot of working. I've done, I have had a leadership experience in supervisory positions and, and I, I have a passion for teaching. I've done a lot of teaching on nice. campus. So. That's good. Just, yeah. Um, but what about osteopathic? A lot of people don't know that's an option. Yeah, so so I've only been talking about MD schools, yes. but there's a whole other side of the field, uh, DO schools or doctors of osteopathic medicine. Right. Um, they're a little bit easier to get into just based off of your MCAT and GPA How statistics. How easy are we talking? Uh, I haven't looked too closely in the statistics because I'm, sure I'm not I'm not super still. interested into yeah. it. It's still definitely very competitive, but it is an easier school to get into. Okay. And what are the differences then between MD and OD? So actually, the differences are diminishing. Um, each year, uh, more DO students are getting into competitive residencies. Mm -hmm. When I went to the hospital for to the emergency room for an eye injury, my doctor there was a DO. Mm -hmm. um, so they can work in the emergency room, they can work in internal medicine, family medicine. The one field where you don't see too many of them in is surgery, just because it's a highly specialized right. and very competitive residency. So with the very competitive residencies, sometimes you might see fewer DOs there than MDs. Yeah. But I think uh, every year that that gap is getting smaller. So the schooling is basically the same? The schooling is basically the same. The DO says that they'll take a more holistic approach to, to their education. Hmm. That's very interesting. So would you ever consider doing DO then? Or do you strictly apply to all MD schools? So I apply to all MD schools uh, just because I want to keep my options open for residency. Yeah. I, I've shadowed a lot of uh, surgeons. And so, of course, it's in the back of my head. And I, I might think about pursuing that. Um, and because of that, I don't want to limit myself with the DO yeah. in case that gap still exists in residencies. Right. Okay, so I guess we'll just wrap it up. So after everything we talked about, that uh, you're spending thousands of dollars to apply, mm -hmm. you're spending all your time and a lot of your money to apply, you're doing all these extracurricular things that like vol mostly volunteer work, shadowing, yeah. so like unpaid I guess um, and going through a lot of school mm -hmm. and you're willing to go through a lot more school yeah taking the MCAT which is not very cheap at all no that was a hard test yeah and you have to study a lot for yeah. it yeah um, and of course you know just with everything going on, the oversaturation of the field, the statistic of like what like 0.5% mm -hmm. of people getting in out of state you still want to be a doctor yeah, it's something I'm really passionate about, and, and I've worked so hard over the last few years that um, with that goal in mind that yeah. I just can't see myself doing anything else. Um, so, crossing my fingers. Yeah, dude, I'm 
keep you in my prayers, man. That's <laughs> I need it. You, you chose a very tough path, but I'm 100% sure it's going to be also very rewarding. So, mm -hmm. with that, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank Andrew. you for having me. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, whatever. And uh, yeah, all right, man. All right, yeah. yeah best of luck. Thank you.